What if death was no longer inevitable? Imagine a small group of scientists discovering how to capture what we believe to be immortal, consciousness. They built a system capable of mapping every brain connection, every memory, every trace of human identity. It wasn't fiction, it was real, and too promising to ignore. But then, something happened. Within weeks, the funding vanished, the data was sealed, the researchers silenced, and the experiment shut down, not because of scientific failure, but because of something far more dangerous, the fear of what they might uncover if they kept going. Today, we unlock one of the most hidden chapters in modern science. Welcome to Curious Verse. Imagine a vault, sealed by steel, hidden behind layers of silence. Inside it, a team at Nectome, yes, the real-world startup, developed a way to preserve the brain with microscopic precision. Every memory, every connection, frozen in time, waiting to be rebooted. Their goal? To archive thoughts, experiences, even identity itself, like data stored on an eternal drive. At the same time, DARPA's black labs were mapping live neural activity, learning how to replay human behavior, and eventually, rewrite it. Imagine your childhood memories loading like a playlist, a soldier's reflexes copied and installed in someone else. This isn't fiction, it's real. Two programs, one promise, keep the mind alive forever. Now step closer, you're standing in front of a glowing capsule. Inside it, someone's entire life flashes as pulses of light. Just beside it, a chrome skeleton hangs in silence, waiting to come alive. For a few seconds, it feels possible, the end of death. But suddenly the room glitches, lights flicker, screens collapse into static, servers wipe themselves, line by line, Sirens replace the silence, and by dawn, everything is gone. Budgets, files, names. The researchers vanish from the internet. News links break. A lab that once held the future becomes a black hole in history. Only one encrypted file survives, proof that the first transfer worked. So now it's your choice. Look away or lean closer. Because the next moment rewrites everything. Are you ready to meet the one who no longer needs a pulse? They called it a modern Frankenstein. Within days, headlines turned into panic. Politicians demanded investigations. Scientists were divided. Some called it a leap for humanity. Others, a dangerous gamble with the soul. Bioethics boards rushed to shut it down Religious groups denounced it, and behind closed doors, powerful corporations feared what would happen if the truth got out. Too much power, too few hands. So laws were passed overnight, funding frozen, the lab sealed, and the people behind it silenced. But was this really about ethics or about control? Everything happened too fast to be a coincidence. Within weeks, major investors began to pull out. Big tech funds vanished without explanation. Entire labs were emptied overnight. The lights didn't go out due to lack of power, but because of fear. Fear of what this technology might mean for the world. The scientists involved were fired, silenced, discredited. Some had their names removed from scientific papers. Others simply disappeared from academia. And the most disturbing part? Websites, forums, research archives, anything tied to the project vanished from the internet as if it had never existed. What if they hadn't stopped? What if the labs were still running, neural maps expanding, and the dream still alive? We could be living in a world where memories once lost were being restored, where coma patients could hear their loved ones again, where a grandmother, once silenced by time, 
could speak to her grandson through a hologram powered by her preserved consciousness, not a recording, not artificial intelligence, but her mind still alive, just somewhere else. Digital and organic merged, not to replace humanity, but to preserve it, to carry love, to carry memory, to carry identity across generations. We could have cured Alzheimer's. We could have stopped Parkinson's, maybe even prevented them. But we didn't choose discovery, we chose fear. We didn't just lose research, we lost time, years, decades. And now all that remains are questions, unanswered, echoes of a future that might have changed everything. The truth is, it wasn't death that frightened them. It was the idea of mastering it. For centuries, we've accepted the end as something inevitable. But what if the end wasn't the end? What if we could move beyond the limits of flesh, map the soul, preserve what we once believed was eternal? The real fear was never the loss of life, but the thought that someone might control what comes after it. Who decides what it means to be human? Who draws the line between the sacred and the programmable? These questions were never welcome. Every time humanity tried to understand the soul, someone tried to turn off the light. That's why the project was silenced, not because it failed, but because it got too close. Too close to something we're still not ready to face. Something that touches the invisible, something that forces us to ask, what truly separates us from the machines? What if we tried again, but this time, differently? No secrets, no hidden agendas, an open sword experiment with visible sensors, with ethical assemblies, public licenses, collective decisions, where every step forward is witnessed by millions of watchful eyes and every risk debated by diverse voices because the problem was never science. It was the silence, the fear, the lack of transparency. Maybe there's still time. Maybe the future depends on our courage now, on a generation that chooses to face the unknown, not with arrogance, but with responsibility, with love, with vigilance, with faith because silence was never neutral. How many dreams have we buried just because we were afraid? How many breakthroughs have we silenced, not because they didn't work, but because they worked too well? History isn't just what happened. It's also what was erased, what was forgotten, what we chose not to see. But if you've made it this far, maybe you're one of us, one of those who still believes that Asking questions is how we find the truth. Thank you for staying until the end. Thank you for listening with your heart. And if this moved something in you, if you feel that some questions must be asked, then subscribe to Curious Verse. Because here, doubt is not weakness. It's welcome. And it's the beginning of understanding.